Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another one of those high voltage power supplies for electrophoresis lab analyzing DNA in gel and all that fantastic stuff. So uh, this one is called EPS 250 Series 2. I couldn't find any nice and easy accessible specifications online, but uh, I find a few of them for sale, quite cheap, like three, four hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, I don't even know if this one works, but I got one very, very good indicator here at the back. The warranty seal is not broken. At least so it seems. Well, so far, I will break it. We're gonna go and have a look inside, but I will first check if the fuse is intact. And if it's intact, hey, how about we just power it up and see what happens, right? Because I think this one is without this open circuit voltage protection. So that means we should be able to use it as a regular high voltage supply. I believe all these um, electrode connections here, they're just in parallel. I will, of course, uh, check that out if that is true. And then I'll probably go and get my uh, high voltage DC load so we can check this out. There's some nasty sticker stuff here on the display. Uh, this is not good. Maybe somebody taped something like defective sticker on that display. I don't know how to clean this because it's not at all reacting with alcohol. So I might try some other stuff in a minute. Wish me luck. <laughs> now I'm gonna power this up. I mean, both fuses are perfectly fine, so I just feel lucky. <laughs> This is 1.1 watts of idle power, so something in here is active. What oh, did you hear that? Boing. It's using 13 watts. And it's, oh, yo, yo, it's blinking a lot. Uh, we have 3.9 volts out, but it says 52. Whoa, it is blinking a lot on the video. Uh, maybe. Uh, so voltage off is what we see here. And I have not turned on the output. So let's do that. And then it goes error. Okay, so there's an error code. And then zero. Set. Interesting. Uh, it's probably because I don't have a load on it and I should have a minimum load. So the error, see, and then you turn this, it goes to the set point. So the error code here is, see, it tries, there's a short pulse of high voltage and the error code here is probably uh, no load. Oh, so we turn off the output. That means, unfortunately, we can't use this uh, nice high voltage supply for a um, lab experiment that is not medical gel experiments. I mean, that means I do not have any extra sexy uh, power supply for electronics. Oh, that sucks. Only if there was a way to turn this off. Hey, modes. Nah, we need to go and get a manual and stuff. I figured out about the voltage. See? Here's another really nasty feature in this software. If you turn up the voltage, it goes up, right? But if you start to go down, it's going around. So there's a wrap around in the software. That is nasty. What if you want one or two? And then you could easily make 250. So anyway, we know now the maximum voltage here is 250. So that's just uh, how it is. And then Okay, it's not responding to any fast moves, so you need to go quite slow. Well, well, well. I think it's time to open this and figure out what is going on, but what I could do is 
try and give it a tiny little bit of load and see if I'm lucky. What do you know? See if we mode. So the mode switch is actually a display readout mode. So here's 100 uh, volt. I put in a load resistor. And that means I'm able to control the output. 101. Will it go? Ah, so it will only change the output. Okay, here we go. It takes... That is weird. So if I change the voltage down and then we wait. And wait and wait and then it's... It goes like that. That's interesting. And then we can see the milliamps. And uh, when we are now in milliamps, we can now turn the milliamp dial. So this is the set point 500 milliamps. So this thing can do 500 milliamps. Oy, oy, oy. That is some nasty stuff. What if I change to the, the setting to 5 milliamps because I'm pulling 6 milliamps. Oh, look at that. Milliamp is now at limit. And then I can go to the voltage. And see, now my voltage is lowered because of my resistor here pulls down the voltage because I have reached the limit. How nice. So I can crank up the 10 milliamp limit. And then we'll be able to see the voltage should rise again, right? Yes, it does. This means this thing works. <laughs> How nice. Oh, we love it. So there's no repair today. But we want to still, we still really want to go inside, right? When we turn this on, you need to listen to this. Okay. So now you listen, okay? Oi, 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 oi. That's definitely a big, hefty transformer. And no inrush current protection so it just pulls a lot of amps at power on and still there's something that pulls 1.1 watts is that a mains filter or what is it there is really a huge transformer inside this unit that is definitely why we hear this huge sound Every time we power this up, and there's the mains filter. It's also a very big one. And I think I know why they're doing it like that. Because I don't see any power electronics here at the front panel. So here's the fun thing. All we have is like just this. So here's mains entry. That will be the on-off switch. And then, obviously, mains entry to the transformer, right? Output of the transformer. And then, then what? Really? How is this going into all the output? I, I did, uh, of course, double verify that all the positives and all the negatives, they're just uh, connected uh, together. And uh, I think we are not done with this teardown. We need to go a little bit deeper to see what is going on. Here is a power transistor they want to uh, cool down. Yeah, there is a reason why I just don't stick my fingers in and touch everything. Because I just powered this thing up. And uh, I really don't like to get electric shocks. So, no, please don't. It's not funny at all. Oops. I just saw a really, really funny thing. See? We've got one more pin here compared to the connector. And this one goes all the way to the right. And see? There's a actually a marking 110 in this way and a 220 to the right. So this is probably how you reconfigure this by moving this connector left or right. There's also two orange wires that's going to the transformer no yeah two of them and the oh three three of them they go nowhere 
But the rest of the connectors, yep, we got the right amount of connectors and they go like that. So now we can inspect this fantastic circuit board here a little bit deeper. Maybe there is a reason, yeah, there's a way to do this. So here's the circuit board. And remember I said here is mains entry, mains on off switch. We got a little bit of uh, stuff with some diodes and a little optocoupler and something going on up here. And this one looks like an inrush protection uh, resistor, but it's probably not working that well. What I think this thing is doing is that you can hear what it's doing, right? When you turn this on, you get full mains voltage to the transformer and the output of the transformer goes to this uh, the point here. It, it goes into the main circuit board. We got um, a rectifier here and oh, there's even a little heat sink on the rectifier. Uh, this is probably an SCR uh, and this is um, probably connected on the AC positive and then some resistors for measuring current and then the output capacitor. So what they do is by turning on and off the pulse timing you can actually make a little switch mode converter working at 100 hertz and this way uh, generate the voltages and currents and all that kind of stuff you need. It's uh, quite smart and here's a little auxiliary power supply for all the logic. The fun thing is see those fixes, fix this and fix that. <laughs> That's a little bit funny. It's not too beautifully made and there's also here see this wire for that capacitor it goes down here and then it is bent really really bad right there and this is because it was touching or it was pressed real hard by this part and this is where you lock in the circuit board uh, into that hole so if this would have been made correctly this should have been out of the way like that and then it's probably also a lot easier to click in the circuit board without this being in the way. So that is a little bit sloppy. Feels like something here is a little bit warm. Ah, it's not. So there's a little beep beep and some processor with the fantastic... Oh, look at that. <laughs> a few sockets on top of each other to get the wanted height. Oh, that's quite nice, some LEDs for the different modes and all that. And that will be the connector for the front panel switches. And now I can try and see if I can clean the, the little window here. Because now I can press and hold on the back. It could be nice if I could clean this up. Because then it's actually working. As long as you have a little bit of minimum load on it, then it will... Uh, actually work. Could be interesting to measure. Uh, how annoying is this? To uh, to measure the output ripple because there isn't any double filter or anything like that. Just those resistor and this capacitor and uh, that's more or less it. Here's the big SCRs or a triac or something like that. Should they, even, ooh, they even try to add a little extra cooling that is so cute. But anyway, that is more or less the, the whole circuit explained here by just showing. The, yeah, the board is really super simple. So I think I'll put it back together. Look at the nice display now. It was really difficult to clean up. There's actually still a little bit left. But I don't think it's gonna ruin the view so much. I was able to clean it uh, using um, gasoline. <laughs> I tried everything else, and no effect. Uh, by the way, I found a picture online of a sticker that was originally left here by the factory, I guess. And uh, I guess if you don't remove this, 
the sticky glue apparently go here and destroys everything so and uh, yeah that is probably not a good idea but now I'll put it back together I was about ready to uh, perform a little ripple measurement and all that kind of stuff uh, this is why I turned on my scope but what I can show you this is 10 volts DC and that will be the AC content on the output if I go to DC here you go this is 10 volts right so now I take my voltmeter and now I connect this one to my earth tester here can you see something nasty is going on here and then I go to AC so now we got a 140 volts AC on the ground uh, to earth there's of course no voltage on the chassis chassis is also correctly earthed well that means the output here they are kind of live so you should not connect your oscilloscope to the output here and this is uh, a good thing to know if i would have done that uh, you could have seen some problems but of course my setup here and uh, my oscilloscope is completely isolated using a double isolated uh, yeah um, transformer for my uh, oscilloscope so so stuff like this is not happening to me but I really don't dare because I don't know the frequency content on all this so I really don't want to break uh, my very very nice oscilloscope and uh, I also want to um, tell you how to measure this and pre-test stuff like that before you connect things to an oscilloscope so that is all i wanted to show you now this uh, fantastic unit is up and running and it can be used for its initial purpose but it cannot be used for all sorts of lab experiments because when you disconnect the output so you have now a floating input then it goes to all sorts of uh, errors because then there is of course no uh, load and i think you could probably resume operation like that and then click it on like that and then it will slowly um, it will slowly turn up the voltage like that and then then everything is uh, perfectly fine again so this is what i wanted to show you thank you very much for watching see you soon bye bye